finished stitching all of our pin tucks and I haven't pressed it yet because I wanted you to see what it looked like. Um, also you see that end is kind of messy so I wanted to share that with you so that when you start heirloom sewing you know that there's that's why we allow a little extra on the end because we're going to cut around that and it's not always perfect while you're sewing it but once you get finished and you've done your pressing and and you're cutting it gets perfect as you go along now what I've done here is I've made enough I've stitched and stitched scallops so that I would have enough to fit behind this area I hope you can see that um, and it's gonna I have to have enough to go this width so I've done that and I'm going to be cutting chunks to create a piece of fabric to set behind this window well let me show you this on the original um, on this one, we have made our pin tucks a little further apart. As you can see, mine are closer together. How you achieve that is on the grooved pin tuck foot. This is set two grooves apart. These pin tucks are set one groove apart. So if you want your pin tucks to be a little further apart, just skip a groove and you can still achieve the same effect and the same precision. They'll just be further apart. In the instructions in the magazine, it tells you to stitch eight pin tucks. And that would be eight pin tucks if you were stitching them two grooves apart. This one actually took more like 12 to 15 um, pin tucks, stitching them one groove apart. So now I'm going to, um, let me iron this for you and show you just how how nice it irons up and then we'll come back and I'll uh, show you how to do folded pin tucks. I'm also going to share with you how to do shaped pin tucks on a um, on a uh, piece of fabric, how to do on a scallop. So I'm just going to give this some, set it on some steam and give it a quick steam. And I want to put some tension on my fabric when I'm pressing this and I'm pressing straight down. You could press to the side so that all of those go to the same side. It's mainly just a groove, just a hump. And see the difference between the unpressed and the pressed? It just really flattens it out. And you can also add a little bit more body to it with a quick spritz of starch. And again, you want to pull with your other hand to apply some tension on that when you're ironing it. But it creates a nice beautiful flat piece of fabric and um, this is the piece that you're going to use for your windows now doing uh, windows is on a different blog so let's cut away and I'm going to show you how to do a double needle scallop um, a shaped double needle stitch and then after that we're going to do folded pin tucks okay what I've what I have here is a simple scallop and um, what really um, is confusing to people is how you actually pivot with a double needle at this point. Now, a lot of people don't know that you can do really beautiful shaped um, pin tucks. And you can do all kinds of shapes. You can do wiggles and scallops. And uh, a lot of people do lace shaping, and then they'll follow along the edge of their lace shape with a pin tuck, you know, half an inch away that frames their lace work. Um, I've also seen where there's five uh, or you know five to seven, three, five, seven, usually use an odd number, rows of pin tucks that are neatly set apart and it makes a big thick um, beautiful five row pin tuck. So play around with it on your machine and get comfortable with it and you'll see all kinds of wonderful things you can do with a double needle pin tuck. Again, my machine is still set up the same way. I'm using 80 weight thread. I have a double needle. I have a grooved foot and I've set on a straight stitch at 1.5 stitch length and I'm going to straddle my blue line with my needles and set that down. Always hold the tails of your thread for the first couple of stitches to keep things from wadding up. And here we go. I'm going to follow along this line and really, um, if you draw a sloppy scallop, you're going to get a sloppy pin tuck. So make sure that your, your tracing is neat and that you follow things very neatly. Now here, I'm going to stop and come very slowly. And then I'm going to roll with my hand until I get 
my needle exactly where I want it to be. I think I'm going to go one more stitch so that I've got one needle on one side of the point and the, the other needle on the top side of the point. So I'm straddling that point. And we'll, our presser foot is up, our needles are down, and we're going to twist the fabric. Now I'm going to lower the presser foot and that looks like, oh my gosh, how can you stitch that? That's going to make a, a terrible little tuck. But it just, when the needles come out, it straightens out. And I'm going to start sewing in the next direction. Actually, you know, sewing a double needle tuck is just like, imagine it being a straight stitch and pivot where you've got to pivot. It's just that you need to have, you know, your needles straddling the point when you're done. So let me take this out and show you what it looks like. Remove that. Pull that out. Cut that off. And voila! See? And when you press that, you'll have a beautiful shaped pin tuck. And of course, when you wash that blue thread out, it'll disappear. And what you have left is a beautiful little scalloped pin tuck in your fabric. So that's how you do shaped pin tucks and how do you do, um, how do you go around a point with a double needle. So next we're going to do um, folded pin tucks. Okay, we finished our double needle tucks, which will be for this section, and the next um, section we're going to work on are the folded tucks, which is up here in the strap section. And the instructions tell you to cut a 4 by 16 inch piece of fabric, and um, what we're going to do, instead of making little bitty chunks, uh, like a little chunk for this and a little chunk for that on each side, we're not going to have four little chunks. Um, we're going to have one long piece, we're going to sew four pin tucks, and then we're going to cut pieces off of it. That way you're only ever stitching four folded tucks. Now let me show you what it's going to look like to mark your tucks. Um, here's our strip, and I have um, starched the top of this, and I have um, placed each of these lines three-eighths inch apart, and each line will take up about a fourth of an inch, a scant fourth of an inch, because we're going to be doing a tiny one-eighth inch tuck. And then there should be like three sixteenths inch, you know, just a scant amount of space in between the tucks. And I've used a mechanical um, pencil. It's a mechanical wash away pencil. It looks like pencil lead, but it washes out. And um, it's by Sew Line. So what we're going to do next is we're going to fold on these line on the first line. We're going to fold one line at a time. We'll fold on this line, you know, right side out, and press that nice um, and precisely on the line. And we're going to spray starch it, then we're going to stitch it. Then we're going to, after we stitch it, we're going to fold on the next line and press it and stitch it. So you uh, fold and press and stitch one line at a time. And you want to use uh, good starch to get that a make that a nice crispy edge. So let's go to the sewing machine and I'll show you how that um, we stitch each of the folded tucks.